Hail to the King, baby! Since its release in 1981, The Evil Dead is probably one of the most recognizable horror slash comedy movie franchises. Over the years, the series expanded its reach to a number of other formats like comic books, a television series, a musical of all things, and yes, even video games, the latter of which, Evil Dead the Game, was recently free on the Epic Store. So today, since I've been rewatching the TV show and I'm excited about the latest game, I thought we'd we'll take a moment to check all the video games based on the franchise. I will not, however, be including guest appearances in other titles, like Ash in Dead by Daylight. We'll start our list with a game simply titled The Evil Dead, developed by Palace Virgin Gold and published by Palace Software in 1984 for the Commodore 64, ZS Spectrum and BBC Micro. Side note, I didn't even know most of these systems existed. The game is set in the Nobi cabin and the player controls Ash, who must close the windows to stop the shadow from entering the house and possessing his friends. Once one of them is turned into a deadite, it's up to the player to get rid of them with a variety of weapons provided including axes, shovels or the Kandarian dagger. Once you score enough points, the Necronomicon shows up and you must toss it in the fire to destroy it. The controls aren't great and for how important it is, combat can be frustrating. You see, pretty much everything here will quickly drain your energy, even simply walking. So the best you can do is equip yourself with good weapons in order to minimize the loss when you deal with the deadites. I mean, look, let's be honest, this game isn't exactly great by today's standards, but for the time it wasn't too bad. In fact, even today you can still get some enjoyment out of this game, for about 5 minutes that is. It's not a great start for a journey, but hey, it could have been a lot worse. Moving on, the next game based on the franchise would arrive in the year 2000 and it's a considerable step up. Evil Dead Hail to the King was released first on consoles both the PS2 and Dreamcast before arriving on PC by March 2001. Developed by Heavy Iron Studios and published by THQ, the game acts as a sequel to the 1992 film Army of Darkness, so in a way it's the Evil Dead 4 we will never get unless you count the TV show. The story takes place 8 years after Ash's return to the present, having regained his job at Asmart and beginning a new relationship with fellow employee Jenny. However, because Ash has been suffering recurring nightmares about the Necronomicon and the Deadites, Jenny decides to help by taking him back to Professor Nobis' cabin so he can face his demons. That, however, was a bad move. Ash's possessed severed hand appears and plays Nobis' old cassette containing the Necronomicon's incantation, awakening the evil once again. Evil Dead Hail to the King functions much like a Resident Evil game, containing similar features such as pre-rendered backgrounds and semi-fixed camera angles, as well as limited ammunition and fuel for the chainsaw. Even the controls are pretty much identical, which is probably the game's biggest flaw as the constant fighting quickly starts feeling like a chore. Unlike similar games, enemies here will respawn at an alarming rate and because much of the combat requires you to be up close, the cumbersome controls will get old pretty quickly. That said, it is quite fun and rewarding to see your chainsaw combos mowing down dead eyes left and right. This is no masterpiece, but when it comes to capturing the general atmosphere of the franchise, Evil Dead Hail to the King does a fantastic job. The cabin and the woods are faithful to the movies, the story has the same familiar flavor, and the voice acting is on point, with Bruce Campbell himself returning to the role of Ash Williams. So while the title can't quite compare to a more polished game in the genre, like Resident Evil or Silent Hill, Evil Dead fans should feel right at home and definitely have much to enjoy here. Next up for the franchise is Evil Dead, a fistful of boomstick, a hack and slash title developed by Vice Entertainment and published by THQ on 2003 for the PS2 and Xbox. The story here begins three years after the events of Hail to the King. Ash Williams is telling the story of his battles with the Necronomicon Ex Mortis to an Asian man and then starts explaining how he ended up with Sad Man in the first place through a series of flashbacks. I like how, once more, the game explores the timeline after the original trilogy. A lot of other media is used to expand the universe with stories that could be considered canon instead of simply being a self-contained adventure. Unlike its predecessor, A Fistful of Boomstick is much more action-oriented and the gameplay is probably the game's strongest point. 
you basically go through town completing simple objectives while slaying deadites with a large variety of weapons, like the infamous chainsaw and boomstick, or other lesser known options like a flamethrower, a variety of launching explosives and incendiary devices, a shovel, and even a gatling gun. The graphics are ok, an improvement from Hail to the King, but not by a large margin. The textures are simple and the architecture is a bit on the boxy side, but the blood effects are pretty good and there is no noticeable drop in FPS. Also, it's nice to finally have a moving camera, but we can't really blame the previous title from trying to follow in the footsteps of giant horror franchises. The CGI cutscenes are, for the time, especially well crafted, featuring lifelike models of the characters and staying true to Bruce Campbell's likeness. Unfortunately though, there aren't too many of those in the game. So overall, A Fistful of Boomstick was another pretty solid entry. Even if a little repetitive, it did expand the lore and feature the best gameplay the franchise had seen so far. This however is where this particular story path would end, as the next title is in no way connected to the previous games. Developed by Cranky Pants Games for the PS2 and Xbox, and Binox for PC, as well as published by THQ in 2005, Evil Dead Regeneration takes place in an alternate reality where the film Army of Darkness never took place. In this game we see Ash locked away in an asylum for the criminally insane, unaware of the fact that his doctor, Dr. Reinhardt, is in possession of Professor Nobis' diary and the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, planning to unleash its power on an unsuspecting populace. It doesn't take long before it becomes Ash's job to stop the Mad Doctor and put the Dead Eyes back where they belong. The plot captures a lot of what Evil Dead is all about, including being quite funny. This is obviously helped by the fact that, once again, Bruce Campbell returns to voice Ash, but also by the inclusion of a new sidekick in the form of a wisecracking half deadite, Sam, who, by the way, is voiced by Ted Raimi, a name fans of the franchise will surely recognize. The gameplay takes a lot of notes from a fistful of boomstick, but this time around you don't have to collect ammo, and there are infinite hordes of deadites that attack you non-stop from every angle. Throughout the game you also find a variety of puzzles to solve and for a good portion of them you actually be playing as your new buddy, Sam. Overall though, this is a strong contender for the best the franchise had to offer up until this point. Solid gameplay, even if a little too easy at times, a great new sidekick and lots of funny moments. So far so good, but what goes up must come down. Enters Army of Darkness Defense, a tower defense game developed by Backflip Studios that was released on 2011 for the iOS and Android platforms. Let's make something clear right out of the bat. I do not enjoy tower defense games and I have no interest in most mobile titles, so yeah, there's quite a lot of bias injected into this particular part of the review. Don't say I didn't warn you. In Army of Darkness Defense, players control Ash by walking left to right, automatically taking down enemies with his shotgun or melee attacks. You can prepare before each wave by selecting between a few different abilities, and as expected, you can also have your own army to aid you in battle. Given the fact that I never played this, nor would I have any interest in doing so if it hasn't been discontinued and removed from the App Store since 2018, I was gonna base most of this review on what others seem to think about it. However, I keep finding conflicting opinions, with some people saying it's good regardless of whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, while others say it's good only if you're a fan, so I don't know. Honestly, I don't care that much, so yeah, we're done with this one. Also released in 2011, Evil Dead the Game, which would retroactively be recognized as Evil Dead the Mobile Game, is an iOS exclusive released by Trigger Apps. This game loosely follows the plot of the 1981 film The Evil Dead. You play as Ash Williams as he fights for his life against hordes of deadites in both the cabin itself and the woods surrounding it. Over the course of 30 levels, Ash can use the chainsaw, boomstick and an axe to fight through the deadites and save his friends. It's honestly not that bad. I don't love it, but hey, in my opinion this is much better than Number of Darkness Defense. At least this thing feels like a proper Evil Dead game, albeit a bizarrely cute one. If you must go with a mobile title, I'd say pick this one. And speaking of decent mobile games, there's one more to check. 
Evil Dead Endless Nightmare, produced by Boom Dash Digital and released on 2016 for iOS and Android devices. This one is a first-person Endless Runner, loosely based on the plot of the 2013 Evil Dead remake. Players control a nameless character as they run through the woods collecting power-ups, weapons and blood drops. Since there is no proper ending to the game, the primary objective is to get the longest distance possible without dying. I see a lot of potential here. The game has good visuals and if it was a proper first person title instead of an endless runner, I might even give it my seal of approval. It's a bit of a shame that it follows the remake instead of the classic trilogy, but even that's minimal, as Mia Allen is the only character to make an appearance and her dialogue is all comprised of recycled audio from the film. Look, I said it before and I'll say it again. Apart from a few exceptions, I do not like mobile games, so in the grand scheme of things, I still think this is a waste of time. However, it could be a lot worse, so again, if you must go mobile, yeah, I suppose this one is okay. But back to a more familiar territory, and more specifically, my latest obsession, and what I consider to easily be the best Evil Dead game ever. Evil Dead, the game. Yeah, okay, I don't love the title, I feel like they could have spent a little more time with that. But other than that, this game is amazing. Developed by Saber Interactive, Boss Team Games and Lionsgate Games, it was released in 2022 on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X or S, Nintendo Switch and PC. This game marks the first time in Evil Dead franchise history that all four studios that own the respective films in the series have partnered to create a single product, with the addition of stars allowing elements from the Ash vs Evil Dead television series as well. If you're not familiar with the complicated history behind the Evil Dead franchise's IP, pretty much every film is owned by a different studio, which makes using things from different entries a complicated legal battle. Evil Dead 2, for example, famously starts with the retelling of the first film since they couldn't use archive footage. But since this game has no such problem, you can expect to find everything here. Characters from all movies in the TV show? Check. Original actors reprising their roles? Check. Story elements, visuals, locations and weapons based around the whole franchise? Check. Even newer fans that are more familiar with the remake can find their favorites here as well. Though there is some single player content, this title is first and foremost an asymmetrical multiplayer game similar to Dead by Daylight and Friday the 13th. During a match, a team composed of four survivors must complete a few objectives to, in the end, defeat all evil from the land. Working against them is a demon that can use a variety of tricks to delay or straight up kill the survivors and can be controlled by the CPU or another player. Unlike similar games in the genre, survivors here are far from harmless and can defend themselves pretty well, especially when they work as a team. It's not that much different from playing a third-person shooter where teamwork is essential for the success of your squad. Every character has their own unique abilities and a skill tree to upgrade. Some are melee specialists, others fight from range, provide support, or make those around them more effective. You're never going to be able to upgrade everything though, so there's some wiggle room for different builds depending on your playstyle. Luckily the game makes it easy for you to reset your points and try a different set of skills with no hassle. But playing as a survivor is only half the story. As mentioned before, you can also control the demon. At the start of the match, the demon is an invisible floating entity that goes around the map collecting orbs to power up. Get enough of those and you can start spending the energy to use your godlike powers to mess with the survivors. You can set traps, summon hordes of enemies, possess other characters, yes, even the survivors, or go to the battlefield yourself as a badass demon. The more things you do, the more you level up and become an even bigger problem. The game is not without its issues, sure, like the lack of a jump button that sometimes can make navigating through the map a lot more frustrating than it needs to be or the single-player story missions that feel very much improvised in a system that wasn't built around them, but the end result, in my opinion, is absolutely incredible. And you know what the best part is? It has crossplay with PC, PlayStation and Xbox, something that I wish was the case for almost every online game. I have no doubts that any fan of the franchise will love us in this game, 
They spare no expenses to make this the ultimate Evil Dead experience and I highly doubt we will ever get a chance to play some of the lesser known characters ever again. But I can go one step further. I bet there's enough here to impress even those that aren't all that familiar with Ash Williams and his friends, so I recommend you give it a go. Oh, and by the way, I currently play and stream this game quite often, but I try not to do it too much on YouTube since not everyone here is okay with that. If you're interested in keeping me company while I play, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash camiplayer. Maybe we can even team up for a couple of matches. Anyways guys, this is it for my list. I hope you had fun getting to know or perhaps revisiting the Evil Dead games. I know I did. If you want to share your opinions or if you want to suggest a topic for a future video, please leave a comment below. Those really help making the video more visible to others. For now though, this has been a Dukimi player and I'll see you guys later.